have some champagne here? Yes, we do. Yes. But we have a Magnum. <laughs> oh, like you. Oh. What vintage? It's 2006. 2006, okay. I think it's a good vintage. It sounds good to me. Tell me. You know how it tastes? So you take the glass, yeah. just like wine. And you say, very complex. And everybody's gonna think you're the biggest wine connoisseur in the world. <laughs> LA's food scene is red hot. And the pizzas are no different. There's all kinds of pizzas coming out of LA now. And I'm gonna try a little bit of everything. Oh. I'm used to New York pizza culture where there's a slice on every block. In LA, it's a little more subtle. You have to seek it out. First, I'm meeting up with Chris Yemenbroom of Night Market. He knows everything about LA food, and we're hitting up his favorite pizza spot, Soda. Where are we right now? It's a weird neighborhood to describe. It's like right sort of on the border of Beverly Hills and West LA. It's like no man's land, but it's like an oasis, you know? It's a spot I've been coming to for a long time. Being from LA and being an LA guy, what does uh, California pizza like mean to you? Like to me, California pizza is a lot of things. I mean, being that it's not from LA or it's not from California, we like things our way. You know, and you could see so many examples, you know, you could see like the classic Wolfgang Puck smoked salmon pizza, or like one of my favorite things is like in the 80s, the, the pecking duck pizza at California Pizza Kitchen, just like out there, you know what I mean? People like Alice Waters, right, and like Wolfgang Puck, they always embrace like the produce and all the amazing stuff that California had to offer. And then it almost seemed like, well, why don't we take this stuff and throw it on a pizza? I think that's a big part of it. If you think of a pizza, Pizza as a thing that you could put other things on. It's like we're in the perfect place to do that. Why is this your favorite pizzeria in LA? I know the food scene, but I'm also like a creature of habit. Like this became quickly like my favorite spot. We opened Soto almost six years ago. We try to do as traditional Neapolitan style as we can. Margarita with anchovies. This is my favorite right here. Love it. Finish it with some olive oil, and that's it. Oh, awesome. Here we go. This is what we were waiting for. This looks bomb. So what do we have here? This is the salsicha. Yep. This is the margarita with anchovies. And then this is fiorata. Now, these are the classics here. I can't wait to try. It smells so good. Oh, my God. Mm. Mm. Back in the 90s, my grandma, who was the original chef of my family's restaurant, she hooked up with Wolfgang Puck, and they made like Thai pizzas. At the time, he had a restaurant in Malibu that has since closed down, but he used to always come into the restaurant back in the day, and he said, hey, why don't we get some like Thai stuff? It's the most outrageous thing, but I, like that is something that is super LA to me. You know, people coming together, different cultures, and then making this food. What do you think about that? Like a guy like Wolfgang Puck putting a pizza on the menu, you know? It's pretty crazy, huh? Wolfgang Puck is to me the pinnacle of like LA, cool. He sort of was doing his own thing and was way ahead of the game. Hey, hey Chef, hey, how's it going? Chef. How's the pizza? Oh, chef it's Steve. delicious, yeah. it's delicious. How's it going, Steve? Good to see you, Good to see you Chef. That's my go-to, but this is like the sleeper hit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sit around and eat pizza and drink beer. Yeah. Love it, it's <laughs> my favorite experience, best, yeah. Right? We're at Spago right now in Beverly Hills. This is a Michelin star restaurant. It's been a staple in Los Angeles forever. Well, I asked for a coffee and the maitre d' was sweet enough to not only bring out just a regular coffee for me, but I mean, they put it on this great tray with this, you know, all the accoutrements to go along, some cream sugar, a oh, wow, and even some extra coffee. So, I mean, you could tell just like, uh, the way that they do things here is really special. I'm actually really nervous right now to meet Wolfgang Puck. I mean, this is Wolfgang Puck. This is a big deal. Damn, even the coffee's good here at Spago's, huh? Hey, Chef. 
How are you, young man? Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Where are my tattoos? I think I'm going to have to get to look at that. <laughs> Me and you will go after this. Maybe I'm too young. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to hear about the story of the classic smoked salmon pizza. I had as many hair as you had when I invented it. You know that? So, all right, let's go and cook let's it over. Let's do it, is this the original location? This is actually the second location we have. We started up on Sunset Boulevard in 1982 in January. And you know, I used to have smoked salmon on the menu because I bought a smoker. You couldn't find good smoked salmon in LA. As a matter of fact, I opened Spargo and I built the pizza oven because we couldn't get a good pizza either. So. We have the dough here, and we always say it has to feel like the butt of a baby. <laughs> I don't know if you had kids already. <laughs> no children yet. For me, the crust has to be thin. And then we brush it with oil. No, I never put it on the menu at the beginning. We used to be so busy, people waited an hour. Even if you had a reservation at eight o'clock, if you got seated at nine, you were lucky. I remember feeding Lionel Richie and, uh, and Jimmy Connors, and I'm a big tennis fan. I had no place for them to sit, so I told Jimmy, why you don't sit on the step and have the pizza? They were sitting both on the step, eating pizza like school kids. Wow. And you know, if you didn't know the restaurant, you didn't know about the pizza, but right, they said, right. tell Wolfgang to make us a smoked salmon pizza. Oh, it was and a you know, thing. It was like the secret thing. Yeah. It became more popular than ever. Of All right, course. so now we're gonna sprinkle a little onions on top. Put it in the oven. All right. All right, perfect. And this oven's burning pretty hot right now. The floor is pretty hot. You can see even in one minute already. Look at that. So it's good to have this nice bubble. Here is our smoked salmon. An important part is you have to slice it really thin. You know? Wow. It smells delicious. I can yeah. smell it from here. Let's not forget you watch the pizzas you in there. You chef. I'll keep an eye back here. You are the sous chef today or the chef? Oh, I'm on it. I think we're doing great. What do you think? Yeah. Beautiful. Fits right on that plate perfectly. Pizza was so we brushed the lips a little bit with awesome. olive oil. Awesome. Here I have a mixture of creme fraiche, sour cream, dill, shallots, lemon juice, and a little pepper. We want the cream. The cream is delicious with the bread and everything. All we have to cover is with smoked salmon. And just later on, let a little bit of the border to show. Yeah, go up a little bit. All it's right. okay. Oh, oh. Right Some chives is always nice. And then we put each piece with a little caviar. All right, so if we find somebody with some champagne, then we can eat, huh? What do you think? <laughs> that sounds good to me. Oh, All right, Anna, should we cheers with the pizza cheers and the wine? To you, cheers, chef. thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. I could eat that every day. Really amazing, this is so good. Well, you've influenced so many people. In Brooklyn, it was like always we had to play by the rules, you know, when it came to margarita pizzas or the Sicilian pizzas. But you know, it was easier to do something different on the West Coast. Why? Because on the East Coast, you had this tradition of all these old Italian families who came from Calabria, from Sicily, from Naples. If you gave them a pizza like that, they would have thrown it after you. Forget it. So people were more open to new things because we didn't have this history. From chefs to restaurateurs, Wolfgang Puck has inspired so many people in the food industry, including these two men right here, Larry Flax and Rick Rosenfield. In the 1980s, these former federal prosecutors quit their jobs and decided to open up a pizzeria, California Pizza Kitchen. You could thank these men for popularizing chicken on pizza. Well, we're sitting in our new restaurant, Bottlefish, in, in Brentwood, west side of Los Angeles. Yet looking directly at our sixth restaurant. So right across is CPK, the California Pizza Kitchen, that you guys started. That's right. What was California like? What was Beverly Hills like back then? We opened our first restaurant, which is still there, on South Beverly Drive in a re restaurant that had failed, I think, three or four times. So it was one of those cursed spots. The last, it was called Zen, I remember. <laughs> uh, you know, we always talked big. In other words, we didn't think about just having one restaurant and, and that was going to be it. This was going to be the start of a, uh, to us, a, a, a chain of restaurants. California style pizza was really in its infancy then. There, were, there wasn't even really a style, was there? Well, there was, and, and it was created 
by Alice Waters up at Chez Panisse yes. in Berkeley, right? And there's no question she is the mother of it. And the idea of the individual style pizza. Right, And then right. Wolfgang Puck had brought it down to Spago. And then we decided that we would bring that to the masses and wrote that we were going to create the third style of pizza. That there was New York pizza, there was Chicago pizza, and we were going to create the third style of California pizza. When it comes to the California Pizza Kitchen barbecue chicken, that's you guys all the way. Oh, uh, that's no question. That's it's truly original. We have to admit, we didn't create it. It was the barbecue chicken that even opened our minds. So we had this concept of what we wanted on the pizza. But when we opened the first restaurant, a lot of our pizzas were the puck-style pizzas. There was duck sausage, there was rabbit sausage. We really did have rabbit sausage. <laughs> Yeah, so we brought in, what happened is the original pizza chef from Spago was our consultant. He created this Spago-like menu, but it had barbecue chicken pizza. Barbecue chicken pizza has been, by the time we sold the company five years ago, 30 years of history, it was number one in every single restaurant, every single day. Oh my God. This is true worldwide. That is incredible. That was our, always our theory, was anything that worked good on bread would work good on a pizza. The last time I had barbecue chicken pizza was at CPK in 1999 at the Smith Haven Mall in Long Island. I'm due for a visit. I met with Brian Sullivan, the head of culinary innovation for CPK. So what would you say is the, the prototypical, classic California pizza? I think it starts with the thin, hand-tossed crust and really fresh ingredients using the crust basically as a canvas to kind of just to push the boundaries. So this is the pizza that started it all right here. That's it. Yeah. This is the original, the iconic barbecue chicken pizza that was created in 1985 at California Pizza Kitchen. So we're gonna make the barbecue chicken pizza. We're gonna start with our barbecue sauce. This is our original barbecue sauce. It's, the next ingredient is smoked Gouda cheese. Just, we just put a sprinkling of that on there. This is mozzarella cheese. The next ingredient is our barbecue chicken. Was this pizza on the original menu? It was. And so it hasn't changed since? And it hasn't changed since. It's been exactly this recipe from day one. Then we'll top it off with fresh red onions. So that's it. That's, that's as simple that's as it can be. And we'll put it in the oven. And we'll just stick it right in here. We'll go right in the center of this. What's the wackiest pizza that ended up on the menu here? I would have to say an egg salad pizza. The egg salad egg pizza? <laughs> <laughs> we also did a sushi pizza. Not a good idea. Sushi yeah. pizza too? Wow, you guys went there, huh? And we did, yeah. That's awesome. I don't, I don't think it lasted more than like two weeks. That was, that was yeah. a bad idea. Well, you gave it a try. <laughs> we did, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think we're ready. Awesome. That smells so good. I feel like I'm back at the mall as a kid right now. Like Taking you back? Yeah. Then we finish it off with a little barbecue sauce. I think it just kind of accentuates the flavor a little bit. And yeah. then the last ingredient is fresh cilantro. Nice and light. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, man. Salud. 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 Mm. Did it take you back? It's sweet, it's a little salty, right. but the bread is nice and light, you know? It's yeah. definitely a California style pizza, you know what I mean? Why do you think this pizza had so much success? I think that it's just flavors that people can relate to, that it just, it's like this perfect marriage. Yeah, I think maybe a lot of people might have rejected it at first, but even in my neighborhood, you walk over to a neighborhood sliced pizzeria, chances are there's gonna be a barbecue chicken slice there, you know? I think it definitely uh, is a testament to you guys and what you've done in the pizza industry. That's pretty cool. And yeah. if New Yorkers can accept that, then that's, that's a win right there, yeah, right? That's a big win. I think that's a big win, absolutely. Just like the LA food scene as a whole, there's a diverse pizza culture here that extends further than the California style. I mean, you could even get a New York slice out here now. So we're in Fairfax in front of Prime Pizza, a pizzeria that I created with some friends. Prime is sort of a New York style pizzeria in Los Angeles, in my opinion, on one of the blocks that feels like a New York block. It's got a bunch of different stores on it. It's a lot of people walking back and forth. About three years ago now, I got a call from you guys asking me to come help out and open up a pizzeria. And three years later, here we are. You started us off on the right foot, and it was with your initial help and your dough recipe that we really flourished into what we are now. 
You do? Would I order now the mushroom and the cheese? I, I tell you the truth, it's a really good pizza. And there it is. Look, you see, you even got an extra. <laughs> There you go. It's so crispy, something special about the dough. I think we just found Prime Pizza's number one fan. Do I get a hug? Oh, please. Oh. That's all, it's all about hugging. Oh, so good. I'm interested to see what the New York slice culture is like in Los Angeles. I'm gonna go on a pizza crawl with two friends that are on either side of the New York, LA pizza spectrum. My boy Paulie, who was born and raised in Queens, a true Queens kid. Coming from Queens, I could go on any ma major street and there's a pizza place that's the neighborhood spot. So, <laughs> and Kevin, who grew up in Beverly Hills. When I was growing up, it was just like Pizza Hut was fun. And yeah. it was just like Domino's was fine, yeah, you know? Well, what happened if you picked up the phone and you told your mother to call Domino's back in the day? I'd be sleeping in, a, I'd be sleeping in the backyard. <laughs> so we're gonna check out like three New York pizzerias here in LA. We're starting here at Prime. What's the pizza culture out here, Paul? Uh, it's bleak. They're really, uh, I mean, they're really, you know, it's not like we have in New York where we just like pizza on every corner. We're going to get a slice real quick on the go. So that right there shows you that the culture is yeah, completely yeah, yeah. different. Like, I didn't know what ranch was oh, until I came to LA. Yeah, like, yeah, that, what are yeah. you dipping that in? Like, I was like, holy oh, <laughs> shit. Beautiful, there it is. Oh, there's the ranch. This one looks great. What's going on here? This is the square. That's our take on the grandma pizza. I'm going with this one. I'm going to go with that ranch. So even though we're in LA, we still got to do the fold. Still got to do the fold. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Great Sicilian, fluffy. Yeah. You always want that fluffy Sicilian, yeah. right? Not too dense. No. This is good. Yeah. You got the last little barbecue chicken? Yo, this is what's up. Yo. Yo. Oh, yeah, yeah, for real, man. Thanks. What do you guys think? Does, does the jalapenos come on the barbecue no matter what? Well, yeah, that's how we make the pie. You like the jalapenos? I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I really do. Oh, yeah. You guys are doing a great job. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Beautiful. So we got a couple slices in us. You guys ready to hit the next couple spots? Yeah. Let's do it. Growing up, pizza really kind of permeated like pop culture in a way that was just Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, I was Donatello four years in a row. So I know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was doing I was a Ninja yeah. Turtle. It was always just fun. It's like you just knew that your pizza was involved. It was just like, yo, this Saturday's gonna be real, you know? Yeah. But you've seen it in like, you know, Growing Pains or like the right, old right, shows. Right, like, right, like, right. like yeah. yourself, like Urkel was like, we're doing a pizza night at the Winslow's residence. Yeah, and like Stefan or Cow would pop out with the ill pizza, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our second stop today is Delicious Pizza in West Adams, a pizzeria born from the iconic hip-hop record label Delicious Vinyl. Their New York-style pizza is all organic and uses a homegrown natural yeast starter. So its Cali influence is clear. I like New York's in the house, man. You guys have two of my favorite things going on, pizza and hip-hop. Great combination, don't Listen, you think? I think it's a fantastic combination. I know you're going to start spitting for me in a minute. Oh, you want to hear my bars? When I first walked in, I had no clue that you guys were delicious vinyl. I mean, some great hip hop artists have been signed to your record label. And then years later, you open this place up. This is a kind of a, a classic area of Los Angeles. They didn't have any pizza in this area, so we built this place two years ago, and that's how our delicious pizza started. One of the things that keeps popping up when your pizzeria comes up is how good the dough is and how good the crust is. Travis is my partner's son, who's our chemist and our baker. This is the man behind the dough right here. Travis, who created their pizza recipe, can talk to you about dough for hours. I actually saw a Nancy Silverton video making sourdough bread, and I just thought it was like magic. Cold fermentation, control the temperatures as best you can. Yeah. Nature has figured out how to do this way better than any factory process. Low and slow, that's my flaw. Great. Cheese pizza. Very nice. That's the best one, right? Nice and light, huh? You guys knocked it out of the park. Yeah, it's real. I think the pizza is like very much like a good New York slice, yeah. right? I'm about, to, I'm about to eat yours right now. Yeah, go in, go in. I'm trying to figure out where your delivery cutoff is to, towards my house. Yeah. I swear to God, that's what I was gonna ask them on the side, off camera. <laughs> sure. 
So we're on the third leg of our pizza crawl. We're at Pizza Nista, downtown in the arts district of LA. It's owned by an iconic pro skater. It's got that feeling of community. They do really awesome pizza and do some really different stuff as well that we're gonna try to. We opened Pizza Nista in June 2011. We wanted to kind of create a place where we wouldn't want to hang out and our friends would want to hang out. And I've been skateboarding my whole life since the late 70s. Had a great career doing that. And one of the things that I've always loved about skateboarding is the camaraderie, right? But that's the thing you find in pizza, you know? It embraces like every ethnic background, socioeconomic background. This pizza right here. Beautiful. That's the meat Jesus. Meat Jesus? Giant sausage, bacon, and pepperoni. Wow. Did you say one was meat and cheeseless? Meat Jesus. Oh, yeah, right. You have so much meat, you die and go to heaven. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> the meat cheese is fucking gnarly. This is good, man. Yeah. This is really good. Something about this right now, like being on the street, people walking by, it almost feels like I'm standing outside of Jones with a flip out window. It's very rare in Los Angeles. You guys so, doing all right? This yeah. is so good, man. Great. Awesome, right. veggies. The vegan veggies. I really yeah. wanted to try this. I love when pizzerias do like the gluten-free, vegetarian or the vegan pizza. It shows that they're not scared of the challenge. This vegan pizza is so good, man. It's so different. Like, fresh vegetables, it's not canned mushrooms. This place to me feels so original in its style, in its form, not playing by any rules, and like, yeah. that's just dope, man. So what do you think, fellas? I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They had some good pizza today. Yeah. Really opened my eyes. It's surprising. The idea that LA doesn't have great pizza is kind of wrong, you know what I mean? It's like, this is the true definition of a neighborhood pizza Yeah, you know. great day. Great day, man. Yo, thank you so much for coming with me. Absolutely. I feel like, yeah, man, we nailed it. Yup, yep. LA Pizza Crawl 2017. <laughs> Yo, thank you, Donatello. <laughs> <laughs>doing things and helping around and absorbing everything by osmosis. Pizza's evolved so much over the years that we'll get people that come from New York or Chicago and they'll say it tastes like, it tastes like New York or it tastes like Chicago. I don't put a label on it. And if it tastes good, <laughs> that's the bottom line. Okay, you guys are eating the pizza, huh? Oh, yes. Look at this. That was great. I like the So good. And this has been a favorite pizzeria of yours for a long Our time. Our family. Yeah. It's iconic, you know. Yeah. Well, where, where are you going to go? This is one of the pizzerias that keeps coming up when we talk to people about LA. I think when you've been here as long as they have, there's a reason. So, Ned, what, what pizza are we eating right now? We call this the deluxe pizza. The deluxe. Yeah, sausage, mushroom, and bell peppers. And has this been on the menu? This has been on since day one, 1955. Yeah. Brent's daughter and I went to college together. We're good friends. The first place she said was Casa Bianca. Yeah. Right, so I gave Brent a call, her dad, and he's been a regular for many years. Are there a lot of regulars that come in here, people that you see? I see people that have been coming here and then they're, they bring their little kids here and then their kids get older and they get married and then they bring their kids here. When you think of California, most people think of tacos or you think of Mexican food. What does it mean to be a pizza place and so iconic like you guys? Yeah, I think that's one of the cool things about Los Angeles. There's all kinds of restaurants. I mean, you got a place like ours, which is a throwback to the 1950s, and then you got other places that's the beauty of this, of this town, I think. Right. You got so much to choose from. 
The pizza journey is ending here at Casa Bianca. Coming to Los Angeles, I was curious what to expect. Is there a pizza culture? Like, what is the California pizza style? But in all honesty, after all the places that we've been to, the style is sort of, there is no style. The one rule is, there are no rules. You get to do whatever you want in California, and as long as the pizza tastes good, everyone's gonna be happy.